While most geometry problems can be solved by a multitude of methods, those that produce clean solutions are often desired. One tool that is used countless times in geometry problems is the radical axis. The radical axis of two circles is the set of points such that any point in the set has the same power with respect to the two circles. We will prove that the radical axis is actually a line perpendicular to the line through the centers of the circles, and if the two circles happen to intersect, this line goes through their intersection points. Recall that the power of a point P is defined as the following, where O is the center of circle omega 1 and R1 is the radius of the circle. We can rewrite this in a coordinate form if we give P coordinates x, y and point O coordinates 0, 0. Then we have the following. If we add in a second circle omega 2 with center at a, 0, we can get a second equation for the power of p with respect to this circle. Since we want these two to be equal, we can combine them into a single equation and solve. Through some expansion and like term combining, we arrive at the following result. Since only a single value of x satisfies this equation and y has no restrictions, this is just a straight line perpendicular to the x-axis. As mentioned earlier, the radical axis passes through the circle's intersection points if they exist. This is the case because the intersection points have the same power with respect to the two circles. In particular, that power is zero. Thus, they must lie on the radical axis. Okay, so we've defined the radical axis. Now what? It turns out that the radical axis has an interesting property that we can utilize. Take a look at this configuration. Notice that the radical axes of the circles are concurrent, and this is no coincidence. The intersection of these radical axes is called the radical center. We can prove this easily. Let P be the intersection of two of these radical axes. Then P has the same power to these two circles, and similarly for these two circles. But wait, that also means P has the same power to these two circles, so it lies on the radical axis as well. Our proof is complete, but we just need to check one more case. If the circle's centers are collinear, then all the radical axes are parallel, and so the radical center lies at infinity. Make sure to pay attention to this case, as in certain geometry problems, this case may need to be solved separately. Let's take a look at an application of the radical center. Let ABC be a triangle. Prove the circumcenter exists. That is, a point exists that is equidistant from points A, B, and C. Though there don't seem to be any circles anywhere, so how does the radical axis come into all of this? The trick is to construct circles of radius 0 at each of the points A, B, and C. The radical center of these circles, by definition, has equal power with respect to all three circles. So we have the following. Therefore, the radical center is just the circumcenter, and thus the circumcenter exists. As seen earlier, the radical center can also be used as an easy way to prove concurrency, especially whenever you see intersecting circles or cyclic quads sharing sides. Thanks for watching.